Hello and welcome to the fourth round of the 2014 PCC Cup Series season at Carbondale Raceway here in uh, Southern Illinois. Joe Craig is on the pole for race number one and as we go through uh, the field there you can see a couple surprises. Kelly Blackwater qualified in fifth place. Uh, good job for her. Joe Craig backing up his win at New York Auto Ring with a pole here today. Uh, going through the field, uh, Kurt Pliskin is in race number one in row number six and uh, there's a couple surprises that made it into race number one uh, towards the back of the grid because of the shenanigans that happened at the New York Auto Ring. Uh, some cars, if they were still running, uh, most of the time the cars that were running at the end of uh, the New York Auto Ring race were in the top 20. So basically if you finished you got an automatic pass into race number one. And that's why we see such luminaries as, uh, as we get further back in the field as, uh, well, there's Casey Lester. He's actually been doing legitimately well this season, uh, but as we get further back, uh, we're starting to get into them here. Uh, next row, row 18, we're going to start seeing the likes of J.C. Carpenter and Chris DeSanta in race number one. Uh, Dale Kensington Jr., Billy Ray James, and rounding out the field are John Kirkpatrick and Matt Brinson in race number one. So that's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, Nicholas Corradovos is on the pole for race number two here, and A.J. Murphy qualifies a surprising third place in the underfunded Zactec car. That's a uh, Bobby Dollar car from 2012 that he's running. Uh, so good to see him up back up front. He's always been known as a short track expert, but really didn't get the chance to show it last year at Tom Delgado Racing. But now that he's uh, kind of under contract with this uh, Zactec team, uh, he can really just run whatever equipment he brings to the track, and uh, th he just uses the 23. Uh, that team really just kind of leases out their number to whoever wants to run it, and uh, I don't think they've fielded a car uh, regularly since... Uh, I think Steve Peterson's car was indeed a Zach Tech effort, but I don't think they've fielded an actual effort uh, since Road Atlanta earlier this season. Uh, race number two is actually going to be quite competitive because of all the drivers that crashed out. Alex Lenko gets his best ever qualifying effort of 32nd there. Uh, as we go through the back of the field, you can see uh, just how competitive it is when you see guys like uh, Ryan Matthews this far back. And of course we have in the last row Chris Washer and Creeper Stevenson. I think they were like four seconds off the pace. Joe Craig will bring the field around to the green flag. Joe Craig, uh, last race winner at New York Auto Ring, uh, beating out Sylvia Rinaldi for that win. They are still side by side back there. Looks like uh, Kelly Blackwater and Nick Azure are side by side. Greg Woodard has cleared them and is up to third place. But Joe Craig and Alina Lazareva are still side by side battling for the lead. Alina Lazareva, the Russian rookie, not giving up easily on the high side. But looks like Joe Craig is going to lead lap number one. Uh, here's John Kirkpatrick and Matt Brinson, who are mired back in uh, 39th and 40th. Surprised to see them in race number one. Uh, they finished 16th and 19th in race two, which gave them a promotion up to race number one. Uh, I believe that's the first time that's ever happened to either of them. Here's Kelly Blackwater battling with Sylvia Rinaldi there. Rinaldi on the inside. That's a battle for third place. Strong run here today for Kelly Blackwater. She gets passed on the inside, and she's going to try and battle back. Uh, Sylvia Rinaldi almost had... Uh, the New York Auto Ring race won, but she blew it on the second to last lap due to uh, some interesting pit strategy. Here's Tom Delgado mired back in the pack. He's in 25th. He won uh, race number two at New York Auto Ring uh, last week. Joe Craig now still doing battle with Alina Lazareva. Alina Lazareva running right on his back bumper. Joe Craig won at New York Auto Ring, as I mentioned before. That was his first career win. Uh, this is his second career pole, and he's trying to double up and get two in a row here today. Uh, Kurt Pliskin now, back in the 81 car. Uh, Retro 80 Racing definitely spreading themselves out. They've got six cars running today, uh, three over in uh, Italy right now. Uh, but he's running in 11th place, doing a good job on that number 81 snake coiled Lycoya. Here, uh, well, this is uh, interesting. This is lap number. This is lap number nine and uh, Matt Brinson and John Kirkpatrick are already going a lap down. So that just shows how uh, disparate the competition is here today, especially with some of the back markers. Uh, speaking of uh, going back a little bit in the field, here's Jacob Eichholz as his car expires on him. 
on lap number 10 from 23rd place. A uh, tough break for him. He was, had a strong run at New York Auto Ring uh, last race. Here's Sylvia Rinaldi, and she's done what she can uh, to catch up to Joe Craig and Alina Lazerva, and now she's right on the back bumper of the second place car. So she's doing quite a good job here today, trying to get up towards the front and maybe lead uh, some of this race, possibly try to avenge uh, what she failed to do at New York Auto Ring. Is now, uh, looks like Ryan Griffin has some problems here on lap number 12 from the 11th place. Tough break for him. He was having a strong run up near the front. I don't think that's going to take him out of the race, though. Caution number one here on lap number 14, as looks like Cale Bernfart Jr. Uh, and his lack of spatial awareness gets him spun out. Matt Brinson got hooked by John Kirkpatrick. I think we're going to go on board Casey Lester here. Uh, Matt Brinson hooks, uh, gets on the back bumper of John Kirkpatrick, and around both of them go. Uh, Joe Craig brings his car into the pits under caution. So Alina Lazareva, the Russian rookie, who made only one start last season at Brno is going to lead on the restart here. She got a drive for this third Griffith Motorsports team in the offseason, and she's done quite a good job so far. Um, she really hasn't shown any weaknesses, which has been pretty surprising, uh, considering her lack of experience on ovals, and 75% of what we've run on has been ovals so far. Caution number two here on uh, lap number 21. It looks like Chris DeSanta and Ben Worthington go for a spin there on the inside. Chris DeSanta was actually running on the lead lap. He was in, I believe he was in 20th position when that happened. So he was having a pretty strong run. Uh, tough break for him. He's got some front end damage. The rest of the field brings themselves into the pits, which will cycle around and put Joe Craig in front here on the restart. And uh, I think that's Stringfellow Vincent back there uh, in second place. So good run for him. He's doing quite a good job. We have Ryan Griffin back out on track. A couple laps down, tough break for him. Uh, back in the field, looks like John Kirkpatrick has a disagreement with Scott Wallen, and uh, that puts both of them into the wall. There's quite a bit of damage on that 16 car on the right side, as you just saw there. Uh, Scott Wallen reporting that the car has developed a vibration now that he's uh, slapped the wall. And back there, we also saw that Dale Kensington Jr. in the 14 got spun out by, I think that was Jordan Demas. Uh, Kensington Jr. would... Uh, play in the grass a little bit and work his way out. Uh, he's he finished. He almost got a top ten at New York Auto Ring. Uh, finished 11th though, as Scott Wollen brings his car into the pits to get that damage repaired. Stringfellow Vincent up to second place now, and he's doing one hell of a job in this Retro 80 Racing team. Uh, he was uh, the winner of the 2013 championship. Uh, well, that was pretty easy considering there were only three cars contesting it. Here is Ike Durbin, who's uh, running pretty decently as well. He's running up in the top five, doing what he can. And it looks like we've got Matt Brinson there blowing up on the bottom. Uh, tough break for him. He was trying to do what he could with the car. And, uh, oh, he just got hit by Scott Wallen. So Wallen not having a very good day with the back markers here today, as uh, that's going to do even more damage to that number 16 Sugru uh, Ford Fusion. And, uh, well, it doesn't look like it wrinkled the hood too badly. Joe Craig now leading. Looks like uh, Kelly Blackwater, she dove into the pits on the restart. Uh, so she's trying to keep herself from going two laps down, and she's doing uh, quite a good job. She has one of the faster cars here today. We're going to go on board the back bumper of that car and show you just, uh, just how close Joe Craig is to her uh, at all times. She's just trying to block him and stay in front and she's she's got the speed to do so she's been doing it for the past couple laps so Kelly Blackwater trying to stay uh, keep herself from going two laps down now Nick Azure in this 46 car is up to fifth place and I believe that's the best run this car has had all season uh, he finished 10th at New York Auto Ring but he's doing quite a good job here today up in fifth place uh, props to him for having a strong qualifying effort as well. I believe he qualified in fourth place. And back here we've got, uh, this is Alex Phillips, and he's running in sixth place. Duncan Cobb back there in seventh. These guys didn't have the best qualifying efforts, but they've made uh, the most of their uh, interesting pit strategy. And they're doing what they can up here. Uh, Duncan Cobb has arguably been one of the best rookies this entire season, uh, barring, uh, barring an accident in... I believe he was involved in an accident at New York Auto Ring. He managed to still get up into race number one. 
Uh, Joe Craig now starting to get into the back markers as uh, he put Hewitt a lap down there. You've got, I believe that's Casey Lester, Cale Bernfart Jr., and Gaspar D'Souza up in front. And Kelly Blackwater still keeping herself in front as, ooh, I think that was Ramsey Cockner on the inside. Uh, his car just kind of had some problems there. Not sure exactly what happened, but you can see here that he's uh, pretty slow, and I believe that's going to bring out caution number three on lap 49, considering he did stop in the racing line. As you can see here, he's, he's definitely slowing down, and there's the caution. Uh, they usually throw the caution once a car gets under about 10 miles per hour when it's still in the racing line. Fortunately, he can get it out of the way. Greg Woodard now also had a problem coming to the caution, and, uh, well, he'd be able to get that repaired and looked at, uh, considering that, well, he limped his way to the caution. Joe Craig leads on the restart once again on lap number 54, doing what he can. Kenny Steffen's now up to second place. Uh, I believe, uh, uh, Stringfellow Vincent Pitt, and we had a spin back there. Somebody got hooked, and I think we're back under caution. Yes, the caution lights are on. And we're going to see what happened here. Scott Wallen once again. Oh, he's going headhunting, and he got who he was looking for. Nick Azur put him into the wall. And uh, Alina Lazarevo was involved. I believe that's John Kirkpatrick, Alex Phillips, a couple other drivers up there. So, um, I think that was an ultimate form of uh, instant karma, as you can see there. Got hooked by Nick Azur, and... Uh, went headhunting right into him. So not really much I can say about that aside from, uh, well, don't turn people, Nick Azure, and you won't uh, get yourself uh, shoved into the fence like you just did there. So we go on board with Nick Azure, and you saw what happened right there. John Kirkpatrick also involved, and that's going to end the day of Nick Azure as well. Um, there, was a, there was a strange incident that happened afterwards. You're going to see right here, and... What are you doing, John Kirkpatrick? As we go on board, uh, you're going to see how Nick Azure just hooked Scott Wallen right there. And Wallen's going to shoot across the grass, and boom! <laughs> well, uh, that was right on target. John Kirkpatrick, heavily damaged already. Looks like he's going to try and dive for the pits here. And there's Cale Bernhardt Jr. getting in the way, and he... Wow, you moron. Uh, well, that's going to end his day. And Joe Craig up front under caution, and there goes the engine. Oh, tough break for him. He was really having... He had the car to beat here today. He's going to stay out and lead one more lap. Uh, kind of <laughs> rub it in everyone else's faces that he did have the best car, but unfortunately that's the end of the day for Joe Craig. I believe it was a clutch issue clutch or camshaft on that number 29 car that's going to put him out of the race. So Kenny Steffens now inherits the lead in this 45 car over Sylvia Rinaldi. There's Casey Lester on the inside. Uh, Kenny Steffens coming back from missing, I believe, two and a half years due to injury after crashing at Dwyer. Uh, Dwyer is still on the schedule, strangely enough, for some reason. I think uh, the president of this uh, series is a sadist. So we've got some four wide here with uh, J.C. Carpenter, and I think that's, yep, caution uh, caution number five now on lap 61 is, oh, we've got multiple cars up on two wheels. Looks like Scott Wallen involved once again, J.C. Carpenter, Stringfellow Vincent, Dan Ferre, and uh, up front we had Ryan Griffin spinning Kelly Blackwater for some reason. I assume they had some kind of disagreement. So we go on board, I believe this is Dan Ferre. Seeing what he saw, they it was just uh, they were stuck in the hornet's nest there, had nowhere to go, and he gets up on two wheels twice, uh, and uh, his day isn't going to be done. He's going to drive away and be perfectly fine. Uh, there's J.C. Carpenter swerving around like a madman. We go on board with Damon Jones, who I believe took some of the worst damage of this accident, stuck behind Dan Lecklider there, and you can just see. Nowhere to go, tried to go to the high side and ran into the back of Lucklighter, and that's going to do some terminal damage to the radiator and take him out of the race. On board with Stringfellow Vincent now, who uh, had a pretty wild ride. Uh, tries to go low, gets into Dan Ferre, and gets up on two wheels. I think he tried to swerve down, and Scott Wallen was there. 
So tough break for him. He's going to continue on, though, without too much of a problem. Uh, so now Kenny Steffens leads once again on the restart, and Kelly Blackwater, as you see there on the inside, I think she just, uh, something happened to that car as she was going through the gears. So tough break for her, but now it uh, looks like Steffens is going to try and clear away from Rinaldi, but Rinaldi's going to stay right on his back bumper, as you see here on the inside. Uh, Kelly Blackwater's car goes up in smoke. She had a good run going so far, trying to get back on the lead lap. I think she might have been able to do it, actually, uh, considering how she was playing her pit strategy. So unfortunate for her uh, that her day had to end this early on. So now we've got a battle for the lead between Steffens and Rinaldi. Rinaldi's got the inside here, and the stronger car, I think she's going to be able to take it as uh, Steffens just kind of... Uh, Lays back on the high side and lets Rinaldi go. So Rinaldi now takes the lead in the number two car. Uh, so she's doing quite a good job. And we've got another caution. Uh, caution number six on lap 69. Chris DeSanta, uh, Stringfellow Vincent, Ike Durbin, Whitney Fuller all piled together. And, uh, well, Chris DeSanta goes sliding down the track. And uh, everybody's going to continue on. Looks like without too much damage. Uh, Chris DeSanta there in the 157. I believe he was still on the lead lap at that point. Uh, Silvia Rinaldi leads once again over Kurt Pliskin now, who's inherited second place. And uh, going back in the pack there, I think that's Lewis Jones up to third place. Uh, third or fourth, I think Duncan Cobb's up there as well. So all of those guys are having pretty strong runs. Uh, not too used to seeing them up near the front of the field here today. Uh, but they're definitely doing quite a good job as I think there was an accident back there that we just caught. Yes, Casey Lester goes for a spin. That's going to be caution number seven on lap 76 as uh, Scott Wallen involved in another accident. I uh, think that might finally put an end to this day. Jordan Demas here, uh, unrelated to the incident, blows up right behind him. Uh, I think that a piece of debris might have uh, punctured the radiator and that's going to put him out of the race. Uh, Ramsey Cockner on pit road as we take the green flag here. Uh, Sylvia Rinaldi once again leading. Uh, Duncan Cobb is up to second place. He got around Kurt Pliskin for that position. And Lewis Jones runs in fourth place back there in the number nine car, having a very strong run here today. Uh, but Sylvia Rinaldi appears to be the class of the field once again. Uh, she was definitely the class of the field at New York Auto Ring, but unfortunately uh, uh, had some faulty pit strategy. So Duncan Cobb now having the best run of his career. I'm really, I'm really surprised to see him up here battling with Kurt Pliskin as we've got uh, Casey Lester getting dumped into the wall by Ben Atkins back there. Uh, we'll get you another shot of that. But Duncan Cobb and Kurt Pliskin having the rides of their career. Now we look at Casey Lester getting turned into the wall, swinging back up on track, and Scott Wallen involved in yet another incident as well as Laris Ryu. I believe that's going to put Laris Ryu out of the race as well as Casey Lester. No caution for that, surprisingly, as uh, cars filter around and uh, Alex Phillips staying behind for some reason. Laris Ryu was running up in the top 10. Unfortunately, the damage to her hood is going to puncture the radiator and take her out of the race. Tough break for her. She was having quite a strong run up in the top 10. Because now here is Lewis Jones, uh, Chris Winter, and Ben Atkins running 4th, 5th, and 6th right now, having very strong runs for drivers who... Uh, Honestly, they excel much more at road courses than they would short tracks, so I'm a little surprised to see them up here, but, uh, well, tires this year have been a great equalizer, and, uh, well, quite frankly, I think they're doing quite a good job as now caution number eight comes out on lap 88 as Gaspar D'Souza gets hooked, and, uh, well, he gets going again without too much of a problem. Front end's a little smashed in, but shouldn't be too big of a deal, as now... Silvia Rinaldi continues to lead on the restart once again. Duncan Cobb second, Kurt Pliskin third. Uh, Chris Winter worked up to fourth around uh, Damon Jones there. Did I say Damon Jones? I meant Lewis Jones, excuse me. Um, but Silvia Rinaldi doing quite a good job. Uh, she cleared uh, Ryan Griffin there, so now she can just drive away as now looks like Duncan Cobb's having to contend with Greg Woodard back there. As looks like... Uh, they're trying to clear him on the high side, but Silvio Rinaldi doing quite a good job up front as Tom Delgado and looks like Kenny Steffens made some collisions, and they sweep across the track, collect Ramsey Cockner, and looks like uh, Kenny Steffens is going to roll the car. Uh, 
We had Bennett Worthington involved. You see here they just hook each other, go to the inside. New York Auto Ring winner right there, Tom Delgado shooting across the track. Uh, just lost control of the car. I think the grass was a little wet, and they weren't able to get their cars slowed down in time. Going on board with Kale Bernfart Jr. As you can see here, um, he got just a little bit of damage. Gaspar de Souza spins Ben Worthington for some reason. Uh, so Silvia Rinaldi brings her car down into the pits to get some fresh tires for the restart, which gives the lead to Duncan Cobb, interestingly enough. Uh, I believe these are the first laps that Duncan Cobb has ever led, uh, driving for Clayson Enterprises in the, t in the PCC Lights season last year. Um, got the bump up to uh, run full-time, and now he's been uh, doing everything. He's been impressing me quite a bit here. Uh, this season, Ben Worthington not too happy with uh, getting turned by Gaspar D'Souza, so uh, he just dumps him. Uh, karma's a bitch, I guess. So, uh, well, Ben Worthington just paid him back. I guess he wasn't too happy they had gotten spun before and decided to return the favor, uh, even though I believe D'Souza was a couple laps down at that point. Duncan Cobb continuing to lead over Chris Winter. I, I don't think I'd ever think uh, at the start of the season that would be saying something like that, but uh, here we are at Carbondale with uh, Duncan Cobb, Chris Winter, and uh, Kurt Pliskin, the top three in the closing stages of the race. Oh uh, boy, that's uh, that's an interesting top three if I do say so myself. Uh, Kenny Steffens just got turned by Sylvia Rinaldi back in the pack as Rinaldi's having some trouble working her way up through the field. Now we're going to take a look here. Uh, he's going to continue on. Not too much of an issue. Uh, Chris Winter now, we're going to go on board with him. And uh, he's having one heck of a run. Really trying to run down. Uh, really trying to run down Duncan Cobb, but he hasn't been able to do it uh, very well. As uh, he just doesn't have the raw speed to power around him on either the outside or the inside. As uh, well, he just keeps following. James Hewitt now. I believe he's running in 20th place. James Hewitt has been in race one for every single race this season, even though uh, he hasn't exactly had the best luck. He was involved in a wreck at New York Auto Ring, finished 20th, and just barely made the cut as Sylvia Rinaldi strikes back and spins Stringfellow Vincent. Uh, can't say I'm too surprised. I think we're going to see a penalty coming Sylvia Rinaldi's way if she keeps driving like a maniac like she has been doing. Uh, so, uh, Sylvia Rinaldi, uh, I, know you're, I know you've got the best car, but... Uh, that's not how you're supposed to pass people. Uh, as, uh, well, we go on board with Rinaldi, and she's rubbing Alex Phillips the wrong way there. Trying to get by, I believe that's Hewitt up there. And, uh, Wallen, who's been involved in, I think, every single accident here today. Uh, just about every single accident, as she powers by Hewitt, but I still think a penalty's coming her way, considering she spun two of her competitors in, uh, a short span of time. Is now Alina Lazareva has powered her way up towards the front. Now she's running in fourth place, working around Kurt Pliskin there. Trying to work around Kurt Pliskin here very late in the going. Uh, just a few laps to go. It's, uh, well, we've got lap, it's, this is with 11 laps to go. So now Alina Lazareva trying to power her way towards the front here very late in the going. Just 10 laps to go now uh, as we approach lap 115. Working on the inside of Chris Winter there. Uh... She going to be able to do it? Pulling on the inside, she has the strongest car here today. As uh, I think we're reporting a caution here. As she passes, Chris Winter comes around. And yes, uh, caution is out. So uh, let's see what this caution here is. Uh, caution number 10 on lap 117. Oh, wow. Lewis Jones just got hooked by uh, Sylvia Rinaldi, so that's definitely going to be a penalty. Tries to take her out and just kind of kamikazes himself and spins out there. And spins out once again after getting hit by James Hewitt and one of the Phoenix performance cars. Couldn't tell who that was. So you see here, uh, Lewis Jones just got hooked there by Rinaldi. Uh, sees Rinaldi slow, and he's gunning for gunning for and he just barely misses, realizes it, and uh, just kind of spins the car into the wall. There's the caution and uh, Hewitt and whatever Phoenix Performance car that was committed to the high side and just couldn't avoid him. So they spin again. Duncan Cobb now with just three to go, leading on the restart. Can he pull off the upset? 
can he win his first PCC Cup Series race here today? Well, he's got Chris DeSanta and uh, Billy Ray James behind him, so they'll they'll play some pretty good interference as uh, Lino Lazareva looks like Chris Winter got hooked there on the inside. Uh, yes, we've got a car spinning on the inside there, but Duncan Cobb has to pit. Uh, looks like two races in a row where we've had teams playing faulty pit strategies as Kurt Pliskin dives in as well. Unfortunate for them, they should have done it under caution as Kurt Pliskin uh, hooked Chris Winter there. And uh, that's really unfortunate because Chris Winter had an excellent run going for him here today. But that means that Alina Lazareva, the Russian rookie who had made one previous start uh, before this season, is going to take the lead. Bringing the car around, uh, believe this is, I believe this is coming to the white flag. So Alina Lazareva uh, got a ride for Automobila Kuznetsova uh, last season. DNQ'd for a few races, but made Brno. Uh, blew up at Brno just a few laps in. Duncan Cobb not going to let himself go a lap down. After that, uh, Duncan Cobb is going to block Lazareva as best as he can. But Alina Lazareva, the Russian rookie, road course expert, is going to win here today at Carbondale, taking her first career victory. Silvia Rinaldi, as you saw, finished in second place. Ben Atkins continues his uh, championship bid uh, by finishing in third place, as rookies have swept the top six. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> a sight that I don't think I've ever seen before. Alex Posington uh, backs up his very strong third place at New York Auto Ring with a fourth here. Alex Phillips finishes in the top five. I believe that's his first top five of the season. And Whitney Fuller finishes in sixth place. Ike Durbin, seventh. Denny Adams uh, has a very strong run once again and finishes in eighth place. Cale Bernfart Jr. surprisingly finishes in ninth place. Dan Lechleiter, uh, who I believe won here last season, finished in tenth place. Dan Ferrey, Kenny Steffens, Cody Deke uh, down to 13th place. Chris Winter, after getting spun, uh, finishes in 14th place. Duncan Cobb is the last car to finish on the lead lap. He finishes in 15th place. Kurt Pliskin pit with uh, just two to go and dropped down to 16th. Stringfellow Vincent had uh, had a couple issues here today. Ben Worthington in 18th uh, had a few issues as well. James Hewitt uh, continues his trend of uh, staying in race one as he uh, barely sneaks in this time uh, once again. I believe uh, he finished 20th at New York Auto Ring and barely got into race one once again. And despite having problems early on, Ryan Griffin rounds out your top 20 here today. Now to race number two, Nicholas Cordovas brings the field to the green flag with Isaac Michaels on his outside. AJ Murphy right behind him in third place. Frank Azzaretto qualified a very strong fourth in that number 64 Red Bull car. A uh, very strong run for him as it looks like, uh, looks like Cordovas is going to start pulling away from Michaels there. Uh, Cordovos might have the car to beat here today based on pure speed alone. Uh, AJ Murphy, though, uh, driving an ex Bobby Dollar car, numbered uh, 23, uh, being leased by Zach Tech, uh, is having one hell of a run here in uh, the 23 car up in third place, pulling away from Frank Azzaretto and uh, Clara Kendall, actually. So it uh, looks like he's having a very strong run and uh, might be a force to reckon with later in this race. Uh, here's Creeper Stevenson and Chris Washer, who uh, actually DNQ'd for New York Auto Ring, but they're back here uh, today being slow as ever. As you can see back there, uh, looks like Cordovos and them are already catching them, and they do on lap number six. So uh, if it's taking them only six laps uh, to go a lap down, that does not look very promising for them uh, here today considering these are 125 lap races. Chris Washer, though, uh, uh, does the smart thing, pulls to the inside, and uh, is going to pull that car off, and, uh, well, lap number seven, he's going to retire. So uh, it appears to be a start and park effort from this 906 car. You see them jacking it up there. Uh, he reported that a suspension piece broke, but I'm not buying it. Not today. Uh... Here's uh, the uh, 999 car of Gabriel Messina being slow as ever once again on the speed on the uh, short ovals. I uh, can't really say I'm too surprised. Uh, here's uh, Cordovas putting uh, Junior Hardin a lap down. Uh, Junior Hardin was actually competitive last race at New York Auto Ring, but unfortunately he was involved in a wreck uh, fairly late in the going. 
But uh, Corridovos put him a lap down. Now it's lap, uh, I believe this is lap 13, so, uh, well, he's standing a little better than uh, the other two really slow back markers. Here's uh, John Jefferson running in the top 10 on lap 12. Triple uh, XXX uh, Motorsports did make a return, surprisingly. I didn't expect them to, considering we hadn't seen him for the first two rounds of the race. Uh, Brian Gallagher makes some contact with uh, Junior Harder in there, gets on the inside and passes him. Uh, Brian Gallagher having a decent, li uh, decent run here today. Uh, he's running up in the top, uh, I believe that's the top 10. Uh, Clara Kendall now struggling to find some momentum in this one car. Bringing the car to the inside, she report. she's uh, reporting that something has definitely broken on that car. And uh, she won't be able to make it back to the pits. She's losing power rapidly. And uh, she's going to stop right there on track. I, be, I believe roughly around the same spot that Ramsey Cockner did. Drawing our first caution on lap number 15. Uh, as we come to the caution, Gabriel Messina goes a lap down. So that tells you just how rough his day has been. Uh, under caution, Candace Bowman reported a tire going down, ripped up the fender, and she is going to retire that car. Unfortunate for her under that caution. Uh, as did Pete Maverick with a suspension failure on that number 86 car. I'm buying that more than uh, Chris Washer's uh, suspension failure, considering that he's actually driving for a budgeted team. Uh, Pete Maverick is. Uh, Cordovo's leads on the restart. Here's Alex Alenko, who is running up in the top 10, surprisingly. He stuffs uh, Creeper Stevenson in the wall there. But Alex Alenko uh, has not had the best of careers. Uh, his car is not very fast, but... Uh, he's doing what he can with it, and he's running up in the top 10 right now, uh, trying to fight off a lot of the faster cars behind him. Looks like uh, Josh Marshall got hooked there by Preston Bell. He's going to shoot up the track, try to get Bell, and he does. Uh, 10 points for uh, Josh Marshall on that one. That's going to draw caution, too, on lap 22. He also involved Claire Aussier, and I believe that's Richard Dean MacGyver there. Coming to the caution, also, A.J. Murphy got hooked by Magenta Nelson Andrew, and he's going to go for a spin. Uh, no harm, no foul, no damage on that 23 car going on board with Josh Marshall here. Uh, riding behind Creeper Stevenson. He probably went low to uh, try to avoid him. And, uh, well, collected Preston Bell there, and that's going to take Aussie out of the race. Uh, Ryan Matthews gets a little bit of damage. Uh, but looks like everybody's going to be able to continue on, except for Claire Aussie, I think. Going on board with Aussie, she hooks. Uh, she was actually the one who hooked him, uh, not Preston Bell. Uh, but... Well, if uh, Marshall was aiming for uh, Aussie, he still got right on target, as that just took her right out of the race. Uh, Corey Dovos brings uh, the front runners, including Isaac Michaels, into the pits, so that will hand the lead over to Brian Gallagher now. Gallagher leading here on, uh, on the restart with, I believe that's uh, Lenny Jacobs there on the inside. Uh, for some reason, I think uh, Andy Lambert went a lap down. Now he's battling on the inside, going to try and get his lap back. And uh, I think he's going to be able to do that here. Uh, so Andy Lambert gets his lap back, which he lost for some reason. And uh, did he actually lose lap? I can't remember. Um, well, I'll have to check on that. But here's... Uh, no, he did indeed lose a lap. Uh, so Andy Lambert is now back on the tail end of the lead lap. Not sure how he lost that lap, though. Uh, Lenny Jacobs now is running in second place, having a very strong run. Uh, he had some problems early in the going at New York Auto Ring, and he's trying to avenge that and make up some points here today, driving the 52 Hooters car. Unfortunately, his teammate Kyle McWella suffers uh, some problems on lap number 30, and uh, he's going to pull that car to the inside. He's going to be able to limp back to the pits. So what are you doing, swerving all over the place like that? But he's going to bring his car back to the pits, and unfortunately his day is going to end here today. Uh, Preston Bell gets hooked by uh, Corridovos and dumped into the wall, and that's going to be caution number... Th uh, I believe that's caution number three here on lap number uh, 34. And coming to the caution, right after the caution actually, it looks like uh, Marshall dumps uh, Matthews. Perhaps he wasn't too happy about Matthews running into him under uh, the caution that he was involved in. Uh, we'll have to look more into that. So uh, Brian Gallagher brings his car into the pits. Uh, Daniel Sharp had some issues, uh, pulled his car into the pits, and unfortunately they weren't able to fix it. And, uh, well, he'd never come out of the pits. Uh, so Lenny Jacobs now 
uh, putzing around. He reports a problem, says uh, he's got a vibration uh, in one of the wheels, and he's going to bring that car into the pits, and unfortunately he's going to retire from the race, from the lead, uh, when they determined that uh, there is a busted ball joint in the car, and unfortunately they wouldn't be able to uh, continue on. They wouldn't be able to repair it. So, unfortunately for Lenny Jacobs, he won't be able to make up the points that he lost at New York Auto Ring. So that's going to hand the lead over to Ingrid Hadeland now. Richard Hertz moves up to second place. Surprised to see that. A little surprised to see that. Um, looks like Cameron Taylor is up to third. Barry Juveno in fourth place. Barry Juveno is the worst full-time driver right now. I believe uh, John Kirkpatrick, Matt Brinson, uh, a couple other guys are ahead of him in points. But Ingrid Hadeland is leading here, doing an excellent job so far in this uh, Stat Oil BMW. Richard Hertz, as I mentioned before, running in third place now, as he just got passed by Cameron Taylor, doing an excellent job here. Uh, didn't honestly expect to see him too far up nor near the front, but he's doing a good job here today. Cameron Taylor, though, appears to be the fastest car on track, and he is going to start hunting down Ingrid Hadeland for that front position, uh, and I think he might be able to do so. As I mentioned before, Barry Juveno who's running in fourth place, is uh, the worst full-time driver on the uh, tour right now. And uh, I actually wouldn't be surprised if Creeper Stevenson or Chris Washer was ahead of him in points, uh, considering how poorly he's been running. Uh, looks like we're going to have another caution here. Caution number four on lap 40 as Junior Harden gets dumped to the inside after making collision with a few other cars. Uh, everybody would, con would continue on and thought too much of a problem. Hadeland brings her car into the pits. Uh, for regular service, so that's going to hand the lead on the restart over to Cameron Taylor, who takes the lead. Cameron Taylor driving for Jobs Ohio and Discover Ohio, uh, part of the Ohio Tourism Campaign, uh, doing quite a, uh, quite a poor job this season, actually. Uh, he hasn't really impressed anybody. He's had a lot of mechanical failures, and when he has been running well, uh, they've been taking him out of the race. Either that or he's been wrecking. So it's good to see him up near the front here. Uh, really showing what he can do in a PCC Cup Series car. Richard Hertz up to second place, trying to hold off uh, Barry Juveno back there. And he's doing quite a good job, uh, Richard Hertz is. And uh, actually, I'm, I'm uh, tempted to say that he might be able to win this one if uh, he can stay out of trouble. As we, uh, I believe we had a caution. Uh, can't actually determine that, but it looks like, no, no caution, as, uh, well, Frank Azzaretto got dumped into the wall by uh, Bracci, and that's going to take him out of the race. Now we get our caution a couple laps later as Brian Gallagher goes flipping down the track after getting hooked by Alex Alenko. Uh, couple barrel rolls, but he drives away. Uh, kind of surprised to see that, but uh, considering he's driving the Rasputin car, I can't be too surprised. Uh... He would unfortunately drop out of the race after uh, the damage to the suspension was deemed too bad to continue on. Cameron Taylor continues to lead on the restart, pulling away. And, uh, well, I haven't really seen a run like this from Cameron Taylor since... Uh, really since he won his last race at uh, Cleveland, where he just pulled away. Uh, Cleveland 2011, where he absolutely demolished the field, as we've got another caution. Um... Going back in the field, this is caution number six on lap 55. Looks like Creeper Stevenson got spun out there, and he continues on. He just happened to spin in the racing line. Gabriel Messina, under caution, uh, has the engine let go. He wasn't running too well anyways, so uh, I think that's just doing the leaders a bit of uh, make, making it making life a little easier for the leaders. Alex Alenko is sitting in his pit box for some reason. I guess he missed the restart. But Cameron Taylor continues to lead on the uh, restart here uh, as he pulls away uh, because, well, it seems that nobody can really get around Richard Dean MacGyver on these restarts. So here's Tom Wilson running in second place, doing a hell of a job, uh, doing what he can. And nobody can really pass MacGyver. That's a little strange. Uh, trying on the high side, but MacGyver seems to go high. Uh, actually, it looks like they're going to split him, and he just got passed for second by Isaac Michaels there on the inside, but Tom Wilson still having... One heck of a run here today. Luke Pellerin on the inside uh, feels a vibration on that car. He slows up in front of John Jefferson. Uh, Jefferson, he gives uh, Jefferson a hand signal, lets him know what's wrong. Uh, Jefferson swings on by, and Pellerin pulls that car to the apron. It's unfortunate that he was uh, he was running up in the top ten when that happened, and uh, I don't know if he'd actually get that car repaired or not. 
Um, well, he's uh, out of contention anyways. I guess he did get his car repaired because we can see him right there, but John Jefferson is having an excellent run here today. Uh, running up in fourth place, he just passed uh, Tom Wilson for fourth as Wilson starts to plummet through the field a little bit. But, uh, well, looks like Luke Pellerin's car is down on power now after having that issue, whatever it may have been. As, uh, well, A.J. Murphy, despite falling off the map early on, has worked his way back up to sixth place. So he's doing one heck of a job in that 23 car, underpowered, underfunded, uh, under pretty much everything, just uh, not the driver, I guess. So uh, he lets uh, Corridovos go by there on the inside, who had his hood removed for some reason. So now Isaac Michaels, who met it his way up to second place, has now caught Cameron Taylor for the lead. Cameron Taylor's lead has diminished significantly, as you can clearly tell right here. Uh, and it looks like Isaac Michaels is the best car on the track, and he will be able to challenge Cameron Taylor for the lead here momentarily. Cameron Taylor doing all he can to keep him behind him. Uh, wins a lot Motorsports teammate to Cameron Taylor. Greg Maddox running in third place. Uh, Maddox has innumerable top fives, but has yet to win a race. Uh, John Jefferson... Nicholas Corradovos and Andy Lambert are now running 4th, 5th, and 6th. And, uh, well, Lambert, as you saw before, was actually on the tail end of the lead lap, made a lap back, and now he's running back up in 6th place. So, heck of a run for him. Uh, heck of a run for Corradovos, considering he's missing his hood. And uh, it's really good to see the 0-4 up near the front, considering that that's a new team. Looks like uh, Cameron Taylor got held up by John Bracci, and now it looks like... Uh, Ooh, he almost made a move for the lead there around John Bracci. Uh, Isaac Michaels did, but unfortunately Bracci didn't know how to pick a lane. And, uh, well, he lost the advantage that he had there, but uh, looks like he's got the car that can beat Cameron Taylor here today. Alex Alenko, now they're coming up to lap him. He had some problems in the pits and lost a couple laps. Uh, Isaac Michaels trying to pick a line following around Cameron Taylor. Uh, picks the low line and uh, cycles back into position. Barry Juvenot now is uh, really trying to fight with, uh, I believe that's Tom Wilson. He just moved up uh, to ninth place around uh, Tom Wilson. So he was struggling a little bit, but is starting to work his way back up into position. As now they've really gotten into a gaggle of back markers back here. And uh, trying to see what Cameron Taylor is going to be able to do. Try and work around Ian Elias. As uh, ooh, he follows Elias wide, leaves the bottom open, and Isaac Michaels is going to take the lead. And he's going to take the lead on the inside as he can't get around Ian Elias for some reason. Ooh, gives Elias a shunt there, letting him know that he's not too happy that he just lost the lead because of his uh, uh, ineptitude as a back marker. As it uh, looks like Isaac Michaels now has just really opened up a lead as uh, Cameron Taylor really struggled uh, to get through that last bunch of back markers. As well, he's way back there. Um, he's starting to catch up, but looks like uh, Isaac Michaels definitely has the advantage over Cameron Taylor at this point, uh, considering how fast he worked through uh, all those, uh, that huge pack of back markers back there. Tom Wilson is running up in the top ten, but unfortunately his car is going to start slowing down, and uh, it's a really tough break for him. He was having quite an excellent run up in the top 10, but it's all for naught. His car is going to break down and fail him once again. It did so earlier in the season, and oh, Cameron Taylor dove to the apron for some reason. Uh, but that's going to draw the caution here. Um, I believe that's going to draw the caution caution number 7 on lap 92. Uh, so now Isaac Michaels takes uh, the restart as the leader. Cameron Taylor and Greg Maddox, third and, uh, second and third teammates. Uh, maybe they'll be able to work together. And... Uh, possibly do something to uh, beat Isaac Michaels here today. Uh, that'd be interesting to see. But it looks like Isaac Michaels is just going to keep holding on to the lead, and he's going to power his way away from the cars back there. As, uh, oh, it looks like we've got another caution here. Sam Lusar is involved. A couple others. We've got uh, John Bracci, uh, Preston Bell was involved. Uh, we're going to go on board with Preston Bell, and that is caution number 8 on lap 100. Uh, I think one of the Nelsons also got stuffed into the wall, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 
I believe that was one of the Nelsons. Um, Isaac Michaels continues to lead on the restart. Uh, Cameron Taylor and uh, Greg Max just couldn't do anything. They can't get around the lap cars in time to make a move. But here is AJ Murphy, who's running up in fifth place on lap 107, doing what he can here late in the going, trying to work his way around some of these front runners and uh, try and work his way towards the front once again, see if he can contend for the win. Considering that this is one of the fastest cars on track, I think he might be able to do it if he can work his way around some of these cars back here. Uh, Roy Cook now also having a surprising run. He's running up in 11th place on lap 110, just 15 to go. So uh, Roy Cook is in contention for a top 10 here today. Uh, it'd be nice to see him, Roy Cook, uh, the Mormon out of Utah, uh, running for Maddox, the Maddox Racing Team. Uh, so, but however, Isaac Michaels has opened up a lead that, uh, I really don't think that anybody can really cut into, unfortunately for him, although he's, uh, struggling to put Ian Elias a lap down. Elias, not the kindest back marker in the world, uh, but he's, he's got a lead that I really don't think can fall depending on what Elias does, although Elias is really holding him up for some reason, um, designed to play a factor in this race, but... Uh, he gets by Elias right there, and, uh, well, I guess that was all for naught. Here's, uh, here's Andy Lambert doing quite a good job. As I mentioned before, he was a lap down at one point, but he's worked his way back up to fourth with just ten laps to go. And, uh, now he's trying to work his way up to third, as Greg Maddox struggles to get around Ian Elias there. Elias being a honestly pretty terrible back marker, if I'm going to be completely honest. As caution number 11, uh, caution number 9 on lap one. 15 as Brian Matthews goes spinning down the track and flipping down the track he got hooked by Magenta Nelson Andrew there and that is going to end his day Alex Alenko's day is also done as you can see here on board Preston Bell gets hit by Magenta Nelson Andrew there as Ryan Matthews goes flipping down the track spinning on his roof and that's going to take Alex Alenko out as I mentioned before Preston Bell is going to continue on Ryan Matthews day of course ends as well so now we've got a restart with just a few laps to go single file since we're under 10 to go and you can see there that the front five have just pulled away from everyone else uh, no back markers to contend with them as now it looks like uh, Cameron Taylor might have something for him but oh Barry Juvenal just turned John Jefferson back in the pack here with just a couple laps to go with just two laps to go he got turned he'd continue on uh, pulling back up on track understandably frustrated for John Jefferson uh, getting turned by a car like that. Uh, Nicholas Corradovos has some uh, overheating problems with the, even with the hood removed, has to pull his car into the pits and get that taken care of. But Isaac Michaels now, you can see just how much he's opened up the lead here today. He's going to come around, he has the white flag, and he is going to, uh, barring any unusual circumstances, I believe he's going to take the win. His first win here today, he won at Mid-Ohio in the PCC Lights Series last season. But here today at Carbon Hill, he takes his first PCC Cup Series victory in race number two here today. Now, taking a look at the results, Isaac Michaels and Cameron Taylor both led the same amount of laps, so both get the uh, most laps led bonus of one point. Uh, Greg Maddox finishes in third. Andy Lambert, despite going a lap down early, comes back to finish fourth. Barry Juveno gets his first top five of the season, and his teammate, Chris Benson, finishes in sixth. Barbara Burt has her first top 10 of the season, I believe, and Roy Cook finishes in 8th. Good job for him. Ryan Jeffries in ninth place. Didn't talk about him all day, but he snuck up there. A.J. Murphy uh, fell back late to finish in 10th place. Magenta Nelson Andrew, despite hooking Ryan Matthews and ending his day pretty early on, or pretty late in the going, finishes in 11th place. Nicholas Corradovos, the pole sitter, uh, despite missing his hood and pitting with just a few laps to go, finishes in 12th place. Richard Hertz, 13th, uh, thought he was going to have a better run than that. Ingrid Hadeland finishes in 14th, despite leading early on in the going. Uh, Sam Smith uh, has a very quiet run and finishes in 15th place, a good run for that triple XXX racing team. Uh, Josh Marshall, despite being involved in a caution early on, that did quite a bit of damage to that car, finishes in 16th. Robert Nelson uh, gets Spannerhead racing a double top 20. John Jefferson gets spun late and finishes in 18th. Preston Bell, despite hitting everything but the pace car, finishes in 19th. And John Bracci rounds out your top 20 here today. Now looking at the point standings, Ben Atkins continues to expand his lead over the rest of the field. Now up to 7 points 
and uh, take a look who's in second and third as Ike Durbin and Dan Lecklider on the strength of four top ten finishes in the four races we've run so far are second and third in points. Elena Lazareva jumps up to fourth after her win. Kenny Steffens fifth. Stringfellow Vincent falls to sixth. Isaac Michaels vaults up to seventh place after winning. Tied with Duncan Cobb, who is in eighth place. Ryan Griffin in ninth. Chris Winter, tenth. Tied with Whitney Fuller, although uh, points are the ties and points are uh, determined first by wins and second by who completes the most laps. Chris Winter has completed more laps than Whitney Fuller this season, so he gets the spot. Ingrid Hadeland, Richard Dean McGyver, and Laris Ryu are tied for 13th. Sylvia Rinaldi is 15th. There is a three-way tie for 16th between Nicholas Corridovos, Alex Phillips, and Clara Kindall. Corridovos has a win, and Alex Phillips has, has completed more laps than Clara Kindall. James Hewitt hangs in the top 20 uh, somehow. Uh, he's... I believe he has yet to fall the top 20 this season in that 155 car on the strength of uh, decent finishes, uh, decent, uh, consistently decent in that 155 car, and Greg Maddox peeks his head into the top 20.